In the summer of 1992, as Eileen faces multiple death sentences, investigative journalist Michelle Gillen begins to question the fairness of the original verdict. She is one of the select few granted access to interview Eileen Warnos in prison. Getting this interview with her was considered a, a big scoop. And so when I sat down with her, I felt my obligation is to do the best I can to have her story come out. I'm sick and tired of those men out there thinking they can control us and do whatever they damn well please with our bodies and think they can get away with it. Truth, not truth. Then we would pick that up and investigate. I am innocent. It was self-defense. Because her whole thing was nobody will believe me, Michelle. Everybody just sees me as this prostitute and nobody will take seriously my claim of self-defense. She continued to repeat for me about how she claimed Richard Mallory said, you do what I say or I will kill you. You do what I say or I will hurt you like I've hurt other women. And as she continued to tell that story to me, I kept saying to myself, the picture that Eileen Warnos is painting for me of this man is in such direct contrast, chillingly different, to what the state explained, that she snuffed out the life of such an upstanding citizen. I started having this feeling. It was like, oh my gosh, I think she's telling the truth. We need to investigate this. So I get a call from NBC's Michelle Gillen, and she told me about Eileen Warnos and says to me, I need me a Sherlock Holmes. Do I want to work on this case? And I go, oh my God, Michelle, of course I want to work on this case. This was my kind of case. The first thing I did is I told Michelle I needed the trial transcripts and I began to read through them. I find this deposition of Richard Mallory's girlfriend and this was not used at trial. And she talks about Richard being in prison in Maryland. I start calling every prison in Maryland and don't find any jail or prison that Richard could have been in. And then I was talking to the operator and she says, but I have this place called the Patuxent Institution for the criminally insane. So they give me the phone number and I call. I asked the public information officer, did you ever have an inmate named Richard Mallory? She said, let me go pull some records. She came back about 10 minutes later and said, yeah, he was here for 10 years. I went, what? She said, the reason Richard Mallory was at Tucson is that when he was 19, Richard Mallory, he had attempted to rape a girl, or at least she thought she was about to be raped, and he was arrested for that. And I went, what? She said, oh, yeah, he was 10 years. You know, while he was here, he attempted to rape one of the nurses. And in the report, she talks about him using a ligature, something around her neck. And I went, oh, my God, because that's exactly what uh, Eileen had talked about, that he put something around her neck. And I said, oh, this. This is unbelievable. I was so excited when I tried to call Michelle, I couldn't even dial the numbers. That's not somebody who never got a parking ticket. That's somebody with a sex crime. And if the judge had overlooked it, the state attorneys had overlooked it, Florida Department of Law Enforcement overlooked it. This proved without question that Eileen did not get a fair trial. <laughs>